Hello again to everybody. So it's Wednesday evening and I am here for the rest of your week update of Sewing with the Moon Phases. So I'm Susie B Living and this is Susie B Living's Gardening with the Moon schedule. Right, okay, let's start. So tomorrow is, let me just put my book, it's silly that I'm looking over here put my book on this side. Tomorrow is Thursday um, the 14th of March and we are looking at another fruits day. So I mentioned um, on my Sunday video that I meant, I've already mentioned Thursday being a fruits day but I just want to talk to you about it again just because it's a new video. Um, and I've got a few bits and pieces in front of me that I just want to show you. So let's start with my sewing. What am I sewing um, this afternoon and tomorrow? I will be sewing some more tomatoes. So I am up to my second batch of tomatoes and I will be putting in two varieties of tomato. I'm really sorry, but I don't have a photo for this first variety so I will put it up on the um, screen so you can see it. This tomato is called Tumbler, it's an F1 and I will be sowing eight of these tomorrow. This is a amazing tomato, it is very compact, um, you can grow it in hanging baskets, you can grow it in pots, that, um, you can grow it in very small spaces as well. So it is ideal and you get really, really high yields from it. So I will be sowing these definitely. I sow these every year. They're quite difficult to come by these seeds because um, they sell out really, really quickly. And it is um, no wonder they sell out really, really quickly. Uh, so um, the other one that I'm going to be sowing is a tomato called Black Moon. Again, I will put a picture above. Now, this tomato I've not grown before, but it, it's, it's a very good looking tomato, actually. And that's kind of what caught my eye. Um, it's like a kind of a uh, plum, plummy looking tomato. I will be growing those in my greenhouse and I only really want two of them because they're new to me and I'm not quite sure about yield etc but I've heard very very good reviews about them so I will be sowing those as well. Um, the other thing that I'm starting off are my melons. Now I don't know whether you can see this picture. Yes you can. There. Uh, sorry, Mr. N is having a sing. So if you can hear something in the background, that's him. Um, I am starting some Minnesota midget uh, melons. I will only be doing two of them. And these melons I'm going to be keeping inside most of the time. So my next lot of sowing will be then going out into the greenhouse. I've also got some more um, melon varieties coming up next month in April as well. So look out for those. When I do my what I'm sowing in uh, April, um, look out for the varieties that I will be sowing. So I'll be doing those. Now, I thought I'd finished with the chilies, but I haven't finished with the chilies because Mr. N said, oh, are you growing any Scotch bonnet chilies this year? And I said, oh, no, I'm not. And he said, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we had some? So I've gone back into my chili bag and I have pulled out more than one chili. <laughs> So I'm going to sow a few of these. These are the sweet um, Scotch bonnet chilies. Very, very nice chilies. And I'm trying to get these ones to germinate. Now, these are my saved seed, but they're a little old. I've got one lot on the go in the heated propagator and I've had no luck. So I might put the whole lot in. And this is a chili that is sown by a company here in the UK called Real Seeds. It's called Palivec or Palivetch, and it is fabulous. I grew it a few years ago and then I saved the seed and then I um, got excited and grew all these other varieties uh, last year. But it is, it's a very, very long chili and it's absolutely delicious. I'll put a picture of that up. And then I found some Thai bird's eye seeds. So I thought, oh, well, let's, while, while I'm doing a whole container of pre-germinated kitchen towel, I may as well put some more in. So, but anyhow, that's it. No more, I hope. 
I hope, I hope, I hope. That's all of my sewings. Okay, now let's talk about transplanting. I've got quite a lot of transplanting to do and I'm going to show you what they are. It's always nice to have things in front of you rather than talking about you, talking about them. So I have some chilies and uh, peppers. Yes, peppers here in front of me. And this is what they're looking like at the moment. So you can see that some of them have got their first leaves, first true leaves coming. I've just watered them. That's why they're a little wet. I will be transplanting those into containers like this because that's my next succession of chilies. These chilies now needed to be transplanted into their next size pot and they are going in a... Can't find them. That's too small. So that's a one litre pot into two litre pots. That's what they will be going into the next size up. And then I start giving them a really good feed and they should be fine for the moment. So that's two lots of transplanting that I'm doing. Um, like I said here, I've got quite a lot of chilies and uh, peppers to transplant. I've also got another very small batch um, that are in my heated propagator at the moment. And then I will have these next lots of sowings. The other thing I am transplanting is I will be doing transplanting these. So this is my first batch of tomatoes. This is the tomato, which is a bush type. It's a cherry tomato and it's called red profusion. And these now, they're not going to have a huge um, root structure on them. But I think, let me just look. I might, I might not. I have to have a look. I've got a take it out of the pot and see what it looks like but I'm thinking about actually just taking them up a pot and doing them into um, one litre containers or maybe even a two litre container uh, so that will be some more transplanting for me everything else is fine for transplanting um, okay now let's talk about um uh, weeding and maintenance so for my weeding and maintenance i've got my broad beans over the road i need to go and have a look at those um i've got all my peas they're doing really well and that's about it really for um weeding and maintenance and then for feeding i'm giving all my chilies uh and my these tomatoes as well just a very very um light seaweed feed uh, i also have the chili focus which is a chili feed proprietary chili feed and that's a really lovely one as well um, so that's that. All right, let's continue. Thursday, I'm um, sorry, Friday the 15th and Saturday the 16th of this week of March are both roots days. So we're back to roots again. So let's talk about them. I will be sewing, put these back into my little monthly bag. If you watched my last video, I showed you my seed organization, my little monthly bags that I have of my seeds, so I can go through them, through them really easily. Um, I will be sewing, and I thought I had it, put it in my monthly bag, <laughs> but uh, who knows, knowing me, I probably didn't. There they are, it's right at the front. I will be sowing my celeriac. I didn't sow it last Roots Day. So I sow a variety called Monarch. It does really well here in the UK. So I'll be sowing some of them. I will be doing my another batch of potatoes. And that will be the last batch of swift potatoes. So, um, and then I, I will plant those in my one litre pots and get them going and... Um, then they will go out into the greenhouse into the bigger pots as well. If you didn't see my how I start off my early potatoes, have a look at there's a video back. I'll put the links down below so that you can actually see the links to these videos. Um, and you can click on it and see how I do my early potatoes as well. I do my next batch of carrots. And the carrot that I choose now is one called Mokum. It does really well at this um time of year it's a nice thin um orange carrot gorgeous and i plant them in troughs in the greenhouse i put them in there that's how i germinate my carrots okay let's talk about transplanting so i have quite a bit to transplant i have shallot my shallots are ready to transplant now the ones that are in the greenhouse they're going over the road to the allotment and they're going to be put in the same bed that i've got my red onions so they're going in um, i've got some more beetroot that i have to find a space for under cover 
uh, that that is the bull's blood and the white one, the albino one. I'm growing them mainly for their leaves, so it doesn't really matter if they're kind of squidged in amongst other things. So I'll just try and find some interplant spacing for them. Um, I have some potatoes in the greenhouse that are already come up in the small pots. They need to be then potted on into my big pots. I use like 25 to 30 litre pots, so that will be happening as well. Um, they are swift. I've got some swift and I've got some charlotte in the greenhouse so they will be transplanted um my I have some onions I've got some lilia onions which are the red um spring onions or bulbing onions and some north holland blood red onions they will be transplanted out as well and I usually do those here in the kitchen garden I might do them over the road and I was thinking actually of doing a few in the greenhouse over the road as well um, if you follow me, you'll see that my greenhouse at the moment over at the allotment is full of my um, calabres and cauliflowers. And then I've got some lettuce and some komatsuma and um, some beetroot in there. But I think I should be I, I should be able to get a few um, onions in there as well. Spring on, is, uh, if I eat them as spring onions. And the last thing is I have a tray of radish that's in the big greenhouse that needs to be planted out. And that will go in one of my veggie pods. So that's my transplant. Weeding and maintenance. Uh, I will check the red onions over at the allotment, but they seem to be pretty good. When I say check, because I cover everything either in netting or polythene, when I say check, I mean actually open up the netting or polythene, get down on my hands and knees and have a really good look. I look out for anything that's rotting, anything that has a disease on it, anything that has any bugs or um, in that case, allium leaf miner on, on them and just check things over. It's a really good time on these moon phase days. It's a really good time to get really close to your plants and have a really good look at them rather than just brush past them all the time. Um, I will do the same here at home with my garlic. So I'll take the netting off and have a really good look at the garlic. The last roots day I gave it a, a feed. So that should be be good um, I have radish in the veggie pod I keep an eye on them all the time make sure that there's no slugs getting at them uh, I've got leeks that I want to have a look at as well take off all the old leaves anything that can be eaten by any kind of critter and I have carrots in the greenhouse I will be harvesting um, a trough the rest of one of my troughs today because we need carrots for dinner uh, but I've got another lot of carrots in there and just check them over all the time make sure especially for slugs feeding and watering any kind of seedlings that I've got that I feel that need a feed but normally this time of year allium seeds or um, you know uh, anything that's um, a root doesn't really need a feed as well so that's those and then Sunday, the 17th of March, is Flowers Day again. And I am going to be sowing my main crop batch of cauliflower and calabrese, or broccoli, as we call it. We call it calabrese in this country. Um, so uh, I will be doing my graffiti cauliflowers, the purple ones, my absolute favourites. So I'll be doing that, but I'm only doing about three or four of those. And I will be doing about half a dozen of my broccolis or calabres. And they are, they are going to be for big heads on them and lots and lots of side shoots as well. So that is what I am sowing. Of course, you can sew your ornamentals if you want to. And I've mentioned before what ornamentals you can sew. Let me just go back and have a look. You can sew things like French marigolds now. You can sew cornflowers now. Um, you can sew your um, hardy annuals now, like calendula, nasturtiums, all of those you can sew now. You can sew perennials if you want to. Um, and you can get, get in your um, summer bulbs or summer tubers. So um, lilies, gladioli, freesias, crocosmia, get your dahlias started as well. Great time on Flowers Day to do things like that. 
Um, for transplanting, I have nothing to transplant, um, but you could, if you've got any hardy annuals or any perennials or any brassicas that you want to transplant, transplant those on Sunday, on Flowers Day. Um, weeding and maintenance, you can lift things like snowdrops and aconites. It, they call that lifting in the green uh, because they still have their green leaves on. You can cut down, you can go into the garden, cut down your perennials now. You should be fine to do that. Any kind of primulas or polyanthers, you can split those. Um, it's a good time of year. Make sure you're on top of pruning your roses. Um, deadhead your hydrangeas as well. And if you've got a forsythia that, that has just flowered, it's a really good time of year to prune a forsythia as well after it's flowered. So um, feeding, uh, again, if you haven't fed your borders, you can put down um, an organic feed, you can put down fish, bone and blood, you can put down chicken pellets. And it's a really good time to feed the borders, give them a little bit of a mulch, because when everything starts growing, you just won't have the space to do that. And so that is Sunday. That takes us all the way to Sunday. So it's all, it's exciting, isn't it? It's always busy this time. Well, it's always busy. It's always busy for me. Um, so I hope you have a good rest of the week. I, the reason why I'm doing this inside today is because guess what? It's raining. It's something that I have to kind of wake up in the morning and smile at nowadays because you could very easily not. But it's raining. Um, so uh, I think, well, it's getting milder here towards the end of the week. But with mild weather here, um, it's always uh, a little bit wetter because we'll, so we'll get showers. Yes, um, but it doesn't really matter in the greenhouse because it means that it's going to get mild in the greenhouse, which is good. Things are going to start growing. So um, I'm Susie B from Susie B Living. It's um, a welcome to new subscribers. It's been great to have new subscribers. And um, I hope that Moon Phase Gardening excites you as much as it excites me. And uh, if you click the subscribe button, then you will get my videos regularly. Also, you can switch on notifications so you get notifica notificated, <laughs> notified when I put a video on as well. Um, and we will grow along together and give us a thumbs up. Appreciation. That's great. And I will see you later. Okay. Bye.